Elections can be confusing, but we all know who to vote for. Now available in the Geekdom 101 official store, the Satan 2024 brand. You can get t-shirts, hoodies, a uh, face mask, or a poster in tons of different colors and sizes, whatever you think looks the best for you and whatever size you would like as well. He's a former world champion. He saved the earth multiple times. And more importantly, he is a man who you can trust. Vote for Mr. Satan in 2024 and get your hands on the Satan 2024 merchandise right now. I'll leave a link down below. All right, so here we go with the conclusion of the Moro arc and the beginning of the Granola arc. Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 67, complete summary of events of what happens in the arc. And tomorrow on the channel, I will be dropping my review for the Moro arc, complete with pictures and analysis of what happens after I read the entire manga and uh, giving my thoughts on that. And we'll be doing a live stream probably on Tuesday with all of you so we can discuss the events of this manga chapter. Now, I'm reading this completely blind. I have not uh, looked at anything or, or anything like that. This is my first time reading it with you guys, so you're going to get a reaction from me live, or not live, but as I'm doing it for these summaries. Thank you, DBS Hype, and I think Andy and Aaron... Kagari for doing this. Your magic is real and I believe in you for translating this. All right, let's get to it, okay? No more spoiler warnings. We're going to do it right now. Here we go. The chapter opens with members of the Dragon Team, including Kuridin, Yamcha, and Gohan, congratulating Goku for defeating Moro. Gohan is glad his dad is safe, and Piccolo and Vegeta watch on from afar. The scene shifts the people up at God's Palace, and then Planet Yardrat rejoicing as well. So it's like the end of Return of the Jedi, where everybody's all happy everywhere. Vegeta suddenly asks Goku about the source of incredible power at the end there, but Goku doesn't know either, saying there are still some amazing guys on Earth after all. Talking about Oob, of course. But he doesn't know for sure, like, anything about this guy, even though he does know. Uh, he knows he was the one responsible for making Oob by asking Lord Enma to reincarnate Kid Buu. Angry, Vegeta keeps pressing him for answers, but Goku says he will understand when the time comes. Back at Oob's village... Ma Dai Kaioshin thanks Oob for helping save the universe. Oob doesn't know what he's talking about and asks who he is. Dai Kaioshin just says he's a sort of a relative. Oob says that's not possible because they don't look alike, which is true. Dai Kaioshin bids farewell and flies off, leaving a surprised Oob who wonders if he was dreaming. Dai Kaioshin returns to God's palace where Dende... By the way, that's, that's the lookout for those of you guys who don't know. Uh, they call it the lookout in the uh, dub, but the actual name of Kami's palace is called the Heavenly Realm. So, those of you who want to give the accurate name of what it is, it's called the Heavenly Realm. Okay, they they don't call it that in the dub because of censorship issues that we dealt with or that they dealt with back in 1999, 2000. But it's called the Heavenly Realm. Um, anyways, uh, it says here Adende politely gives his regards. Suddenly, Dai Kaioshin reverts back into Boo, and Mr. Satan is happy he's safe. Boo doesn't know what he's talking about, though. It seems that he's lost his memories of being Dai Kaioshin. Mr. Satan then offers up a big feast at his, at his home in celebration, and everyone invites everyone to come. The scene moves to Satan's place with everyone eating and celebrating. Later, Goku teleports to New Namek to return Eska, and they use their Dragon Balls to revive everyone that was destroyed by Moro. Typical end of the arc wish. We've seen it a million times. Even the people of Planet Zoon are back to life. It seems everything is back to normal except for a certain angel in training, which would be Mirus, of course. Several days later, Goku, Vegeta, and Boo are aboard Jocko's ship. It seems they're to be awarded medals for their role in dealing with Moro. Another Star Wars reference, although Goku says he doesn't need it. Upset, Jocko explains... Well, maybe not a reference, but it comes off like that. Jocko explains that these medals are, far, are for the true elites. Goku asks how many Jocko has, and Jocko says this is the first time getting one. Of course it is. Goku and company arrive at the Galactic Patrol headquarters and receive their medals from Galactic King, who congratulates them for a job well done. The King thanks Goku for defeating Moro, and once again, Goku grasps his penis. Because <laughs> remember, the whole joke is that he, one of the tentacles that's coming off of him is, is his dick. So, as the... <laughs> Oh boy. As the as the award recipients are named off, there's just one more. Miris. Miris Ikanaichi Yabashi. 
This is um this is Miris's full name, even though that's not his birth name. Miris created that name to fit in with the Galactic Patrol because they all have long last names, like Jocko. People in the Galactic Patrol all have last names. Other Dragon Ball characters don't. Like, for example, Briefs is not Bulma's last name. That's a huge mistranslation. I did a whole video about that. But uh, when it comes to the uh, Galactic Patrolmen, Jocko and Miris have last names. But remember, Miris is also an angel, so he created that name just to fit in with the GP. You know what I'm saying? And they're all food puns, by the way. They're all food puns. Miris is back, and, and, and I think it's for dried foods, like dried... Um, Cypher started on Twitter, but it's like dried uh, fruits and things like that. Miris is back, and Goku is surprised. Miris is happy to be able to meet them again, and Vegeta asks how he's back. Wasn't he supposed to have disappeared? That's what we all are asking, right? Mira says that, yes, he did disappear as an angel, that is. The scene moves to a few days before with Whis and Beerus kneeling before the Grand Priest. The Grand Priest explains that usually angels who break the rules vanish forever. However, he took things to, on his own hands by regenerating Mira into a mortal. In other words, he now has a lifespan and no longer has angel power. So Mira is now a mortal. It's pretty much the preacher's wife storyline uh, being done here uh, in uh, Dragon Ball. Kind of, sort of, right? Let me zoom out a little bit here because y'all probably couldn't see the text there. Well, I'm reading it to you, so it doesn't matter. Reading y'all a bedtime story right here, even though it's not bedtime yet. At least not for me. Maybe for you it is. Um, so he says this is the only way of saving him. Grand Priest then says that there was one person who was willing to give up their life for this to happen. It is revealed that Shin is that person. Beerus gets upset, reminding Shin that their lives are linked together. Yes, yeah, so if Kaio Shin dies, Beerus vanishes. The Grand Priest says that the trio will have to deal with a penalty for the situation, letting, which is basically letting Miris, you know, lose his angel powers. And the punishment is letting the Zenos ride them like horses. Uh, wow, that's, that's funny to me. A tired out Beerus after running laps collapses to the floor and Zeno chides him to go faster. Um, so <laughs> Zeno's just bullying Beerus right now, you know, the Omni King. Grand Priest says the usual attendants are on vacation, so he's thankful for Beerus' help. Beerus blames Goku for this because it was his fault Beerus ended up breaking the rules. Beerus asks Whis what Goku is doing now, and Whis replies that Goku is at the Galactic Patrol headquarters having a party with Beerus and the others. Beerus is not pleased. Moro... Or, sorry, more scenes of the party commence as Goku, Mirus, and everyone else pose for a picture. Beerus won't forgive Goku for this, and Zeno calls for Beerus to go faster and faster. And thus, ends Goku and company's mission with the Galactic Patrol. The universe enjoys some peace for a time. So again, we don't know how much time, but at least there's some peace. We don't know if it's a year, a month, a week, or just like three days. We have no clue. It's probably going to be a few days, I would say. Back at the Galactic Patrol headquarters, Jocko is yawning in his chair noting today is also peaceful having gone out before uh he is now going to do a cyber patrol on the internet until it's time to clock out big mistake jocko don't read the internet except for you guys' comments he can read those y'all are smart but the rest of youtube forget it well maybe not the rest of it but some most of it turns out that he's looking at auction sites what kind of patrolling is that interesting he's on ebay he's on dragon ball's version of ebay here Another officer, Kiramisu, Karamisu, says has business in the Galactic Patrol and says Jocko should go with him if he's free. Jocko tries to stay, but he's dragged along anyway. So we're gonna continue with Jocko here. Lots of lots of Jocko in this in this chapter. At the Galactic at the Galactic Prison, Jocko passes by the female prisoners who had escaped before. One of them asks how Jocko is doing, and he says things are peaceful every day thanks to them. She teases him about wanting to play again, but Jocko shuts her down, saying she won't get away again. Karamisu has a question for Yayunba. It seems their radar caught a faint distress signal near the crater where Moro exploded. Does he know what that is? Yunba doesn't know. So he asks... Ooh, this is a hard one to pronounce. Kuitur. I don't even remember that character. Is that a new character? I have no idea who that is. Who also doesn't know. Another GP member. Instead, they argue about food before one of the other prisoners, Zauyagi, up speaks up. He hasn't forgotten the Galactic Patrol killed their companions. So it's basically the prisoners talking trash to Jocko here, the ones that Moro freed. So they may be involved in this arc, possibly. Possibly. Karamisu explains that it was actually Moro who killed those guys. Jocko says that Moro ate and killed 7-3, which is true. Uh, Zayagi scoffs and says 7-3 isn't a person so he can't be killed. 
well, destroyed, whatever. Back on Earth, we see the crater left by Moro's explosion. Inside, there are pieces of something. Zaoyagi then says that 7-3 was, in fact, something they'd stolen. Oh, so 7-3 was not created by them. It was stolen from somebody else. Interesting. I, I like that. I like that. They put data in his empty shell and strengthened it from scratch. If it's that dangerous, Karamisu's glass disappeared. Interesting. Back on Earth, the substance shown before begins moving. Yunba asks Jocko if they confirm the destruction of 7-3. Jocko says it's not necessary. Uh, Moro and company have disappeared without a trace. Yunba Smug says, you didn't check, did you? On Earth again, the damaged head of 7-3 lies in the crater. The substance from before attaches to him and his eye begins to glow. So this is all like his uh, mechanical parts or whatever. It's like Super Android 13. Uh, after hearing Yumba's words, Jocko and the officer decide to go to Earth and to investigate Moro's crater. Unfortunately, they're able to find nothing, not a trace of Moro or 7-3. Jocko then suggests they go get some cheese since they're on Earth. <laughs> Wacky. Okay, last page here, y'all. So, anyways, on the other side of the rock formation, two aliens hold a jar with 7-3's head inside. As Jocko and Karamisu fly off, the two aliens make their escape back to their ship with the stolen 7-3 and blast off from Earth. Jocko and Karamisu leave as well, but not before getting some souvenirs. So a few months have passed. Okay, so this so we so some time has passed here, a few months from the moral arc. So there is a bit of a time skip. But not a big one. In the universe far from Earth. In the universe or in the galaxy? Is it a different universe here? See, I think it's still universe 7, but they probably mean like somewhere like a galaxy far from Earth. It doesn't actually say which universe, so I'm thinking it's still universe 7, but they probably mean like a, like across the universe. Because it's in the universe far from Earth, so it's in universe 7, but far from Earth, not a universe far from Earth. So it's basically within universe 7, but it's somewhere else in space. Okay, so just to clarify that, because people get confused. The men who took 7-3's head are back aboard their own ship. It turns out it was Sagambo who stole 7-3 from them to begin with. His data has since been copied to some new models. Originally, they lost hope when 7-3 was stolen, but now he's powered up far beyond expectation. Oh boy, now it's their time to rule the universe. Just then, another ship comes into view. The mysterious pilot inside confirms that someone named Oatmeal, that that's the ship. I guess they mean that's in the ship. Oatmeal tells the guy, Granola, to stay sharp. Granola acknowledges and says he's relying on Oatmeal for support. Oatmeal. We're going to call him Oatmeal for now. Oatmeal is the pun, though. The members of the other ship are in a panic. It's time to deploy the, tra the troops. A group of them fire on Granola in the ship's hallways, but Granola manages to take them out by firing his gun and dealing, an, and dealing an, electrical sh an electrical attack. The boss, Gaichi, calls for all of the OG soldiers to be activated, and we see them coming out of many pods. He's talking about the other 7-3s, but I guess they are not the same. They're not They're not clones of the original 7-3 based on what it says here. It seems like they have their own 7-3s, but I have to actually see the chapter to kind of be 100% sure on that, so don't quote me on that. A battalion of men that look like 7-3 approach Granola. Which one is the target? Granola tells Oatmeal to find it. They note that this is OG 7-3-I, not their target. Granola breaks 7-2's gem as he collapses. This is a different model, I guess. The other numbered units rush in and Granola takes all of them out too with painted pointed attacks. So Granola's firing on them with his gun. I mentioned that in the earlier spoilers. And he's taking him out by blasting the crystal. So that makes sense. He rounds the corner to face off against more soldiers, destroying them too before blasting the door panel. Inside are even more soldiers, that is, until Granola sees the regenerating 7-3 encapsulated in the, in the back. So I had thought the entire time that Granola was doing it, and I guess he's not. Oatmeal tells Granola he has found the target. So the idea is to take 7-3, I'm guessing, not destroy him, to take him and do something so this was a little bit different than i was expecting i thought it was going to be a thing where Gr granola makes clones of 7-3 but that's not the case at all that is not the case the other 7-3 robots are already there and if they were clones it wasn't granola doing it it was gaichi and 
and, and those guys, you know what I mean? The uh, the the guys who came in to take seven three originally. So um, interesting. I, I don't know where this is going, honestly. I, I don't. I'm curious about where this is going to go because this is a very strange turn of events, so to speak. And I don't know if Granola is going to destroy. I, I doubt he's going to do that. I think he's going to just take seven three, and and maybe reprogram him or maybe take his power or who knows i mean who really knows but 7-3 is still regenerating slowly so that means that even if he has the powers of piccolo or whatever if that's the case he hasn't fully regenerated it's already been months it has already been months so it's going to be a very slow regeneration if he still has those powers a lot of unanswered questions here we're probably not going to get answers this manga chapter but I'm sure there will be tons of theories being thrown around and ideas. Tons, I'm sure. Um, with that being said, that's the end of the manga chapter full. Spoilers, like I said, my review will be up tomorrow on the channel. And uh, yeah, that is the entire story of this arc. So thank you again for checking out the video. Hope you have a great day. And not of this arc, of this chapter, excuse me. And uh, leave a comment down below to me what you think. Subscribe if you have not, and if you're getting notification issues, please check your notifications. Unsub, resub, hit the bell, make sure you're getting the, the videos and your notifications. And thank you, and we'll talk soon.